Hello there, people of the internet. This is probably going to be a quick video. I'm just out here testing a rifle that I picked up not too terribly long ago. Before we get started, quick Patreon shout out to my new Patreon supporter, Sean Black. One of the Patreon supporter tiers is that I give a shout out to Patreon supporters. So, shout out to Sean Black. If you want to join the Patreon tier, then links to both Patreon and Utreon are in the description below. So, I am out here with my brand new, not so new, number one Mark III British uh, short magazine Lee Enfield rifle. This right here is still chambered in 303 British, which is a little on the expensive side, side to shoot, which is one of the reasons why I don't shoot it so much nowadays. So, hey, if you want to help <laughs> help pay for ammunition, like I said, links are in the description below. So, 303 British, well, somebody's getting it over there. 303 British is a rimmed cartridge so by today's standards that is absolutely obsolete rimmed cartridges definitely make uh feeding mechanisms much more complex the reason why they had this chambered in a rimmed cartridge is because back whenever this rifle well not this rifle but back whenever this cartridge was designed the 303 british uh these rifles were a lot easier to headspace on a rim versus the neck of a cartridge which is what we uh headspace on nowadays so Anyone who doesn't know anything about these rifles, it's a bolt action rifle. It is a cock on close action as opposed to a cock on open action. This way you can cycle your action very, very rapidly. As a matter of fact, the British were able to cycle these rifles so rapidly, in fact, <laughs> that uh, people during uh, times of war thought that they actually had self-loading rifles. Now, with this being a double stack magazine that has a rimmed cartridge, if you don't stack your cartridges on top of each other in the proper manner, then the rims will actually catch on one another and you will suffer from what is known as rim lock and there there can be a true detriment whenever you are fighting for your life so i don't even know if this rifle here fires apparently the magazine does not feed <laughs> but i have never played with this rifle before and uh that magazine probably needs some work from what i'm seeing <laughs> oh okay it just wasn't in the rifle all the way i heard kevin screaming for a second there we go. It's almost like whenever the magazine is properly seated, the rifle will actually feed. So I do not know if this will even fire. As a matter of fact, I don't know anything about this rifle. Let me go ahead and just take our bolt off here. Our little bolt catch to stop that from happening is busted. Check down the chamber. Good. Just making sure that we don't have any barrel obstructions or anything like that. So yeah, this rifle should fire from the functionality that I've tested. Let's go ahead, put a round down range, see if we hit our target. And survey says, it does look like we hit our target, but it looks like we hit it a little low. Let me go ahead and pull this round out if I can. This right here is PPU brass, by the way, full metal jackets, if anyone's wondering what kind of ammunition I'm running here. So let me try that again, and we'll see if we hit low again. Maybe there's just some oil or something that was in the barrel. There we go. Yeah, that was more of a center shot. That really bodes well for uh, this Enfield rifle. Uh, there's a lot of these that are coming from Ethiopia. And uh, the Ethiopian rifles are known to not be all that accurate because the bores have not been taken care of over the years. And uh, the barrels are just not that great. They're, they're just not in that great a condition, those rifles. This right here is not from Ethiopia. As a matter of fact, I don't see any import marks or anything on this rifle, so. I have no idea where this rifle would have come from. As a matter of fact, we don't have much in terms of markings on this rifle at all. On the receiver band right here, we have GR, uh, BSACO, so BSA, it's a BSA rifle, and 1918 production. This right here is a World War I rifle. This is a SHTLE 3 star. Yes, that is a very interesting looking star right there. <laughs> that is a six point star. I was under the impression that these had five point stars, but I could be wrong. We have what used to be a uh, unit designation, I'm assuming right there, right there on the back of the stock. A lot of times these were taken off because these were uh, giving away information to the enemies that were able to capture the rifles. But it is cool that this one right here still has a hole for it. This actually has in the buttstock, if I can manage to get it out. Ugh. The oil bottle with it. That is pretty cool. It's just a little aluminum oil bottle. 
and this right here is still in the buttstock of this thing. So that is really neat to have. Okay, well, I'm thinking, well, I don't have my camera stand out here. I'm thinking I'm going to wander out to 100 yards and shoot at our target and see if I hit it. And I'm probably just going to leave you guys right here because I don't have the camera stand out here. So there's no way for me to set up for you guys to watch down there. Let me go ahead and just for functionality's sake, make sure the safety works. This is not chambered. Safety does, in fact, work. That is wonderful. I'm probably going to take this rifle hunting since it has a functional safety, assuming that it's accurate. Let me walk into 100 yards and we'll find that out. First, I'm going to spray paint my target. All right. Walk out to 100 yards, see if I hit my target. If I don't, I'm willing to bet that the uh, windage on this probably needs adjusted. A lot of times with these rifles, uh, the, well, the windage tends to be off with these. Um, I think just over time, over the years, these might have shot straight back whenever they were first made. But just with these old rifles, that's one thing I have noticed. The windage definitely does need adjusted on a lot of these uh, old number ones, including the Ishapur 303 rifles. As a matter of fact, I made a video on my Ishapur 303 and how the front side is so canted off to, I think it's the right, might be the left, but so canted off to the left to uh, try and zero that thing that it's absolutely crazy. All right, I'll be at 100 yards. You guys wait here. All right, well, we made our shots on target. That's a really good sign. Yeah, I got no problems taking this thing hunting. Looks like I got two shots in the center and one I did pull a little bit to the right. And I made some discoveries about this rifle. Uh, well, I was holding my hand over the rifle like this to catch the cartridges as they ejected. And I completely forgot that we have this piece of metal right here that moves on the rail and got my finger caught between this, you know, uh, bolt retaining system right here that moves on the rail and the uh, charging clip guide right there. And I managed to squish my finger pretty good in that. And oh boy, does that hurt. That's gonna be a blood blister. And it's right on the joint of my finger too. Ah, that's awful. Okay, well, like I said, this is going to be a short video. Uh, 303 British is expensive right now. So I just wanted to go ahead and come out and send some rounds off with this rifle right here, which is exactly what I did. And I'm pleased to see that I can actually make shots out at the 100 yards that I was at. So very, very happy about that with this rifle. Um, I don't like rifles. I don't like having rifles that don't shoot. So I'm noticing some differences between this number one and the number one that I had a while back. And I noticed that this right here has like stippling right here on the uh, rear sight protective wings. Does it have it on the front wings as well? It sure does. It just has stippling on the protective wings for some reason. And well, besides that, I'm not seeing many other differences. Uh, the trigger itself has uh, cut grooves inside of it to help with, you know, firmly getting a grasp on the trigger. If your hands are muddy or wet or something, then I could understand how that would be a problem. Looks like we're missing our stacking swivel up there. Uh, besides that, everything looks pretty much identical. Identical. This is a different year than the one I had. The one I had was a 1917. This one is a 1918. We have a lot of machine marks and whatnot on the receiver itself, just from where the machining was done on the rifle. But I mean, 1918 World War One. That was not exactly, not exactly a good time for any military that was fighting. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, other outro stuff. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day.
since I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garen. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. <laughs>